Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's better to laugh than to cry. So, yeah. Yeah, at least on the inside. No. How was it? How was it? Yeah. <laughs> right. Good <laughs> Are you laughing on the inside? Yeah. <laughs> Let's call it a night and do the half pint tomorrow. I mean, it worked brilliantly last week, so uh, <laughs> let's, let's sleep on it. And uh, I don't think so. Maybe. <laughs> We could do a morning episode, like the half hour before we have to go to work. Oh, I'd like that. (laughs) Screaming kids, screaming parents, (laughs) sleep and coffee deprivation. Yeah, that's uh, Yeah, that sounds like an interesting uh, episode. But yeah, that's maybe for the future. No, after that, after that first half hour of having, you know, I need a couple of cups of coffee. And then that next hour after that is the only point in the day where I don't feel tired. Let's do it then. <laughs> yeah, but that's when I have to go to the toilet. So it's like uh, uh, you have the two first yeah, cups of coffee and then, all right, I'm out for half an hour and then yeah, doom scrolling. You, and... <laughs> you, li- you live in the future an hour ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's all good. <laughs> But that was uh, something uh, they talked about on another podcast where they they read funny things on internet. And this was on those, am I the asshole? When a person working in a coffee shop who had a a co-worker who came in and the co-worker had said clearly that they were lactose intolerant. And they started their shift with a double espresso with a lot of milk in some latte thing. (laughs) Shugging that down and then went to the bathroom like every 15 minutes in their entire shift. <laughs> like, can I complain about this? Because they really shouldn't be drinking that much coffee and milk <laughs> because they, they obviously can't handle it. <laughs> I had a colleague that I don't remember exactly what he had, but it, it was something with uh, lactose uh, or a derivative. And he has had it his entire life. And I mean, he just thought that was the way you went to the toilet, that it took that long and so <laughs> on. And, uh, and then he was at, I think he was in his late 30s and he visited the doctor for something else and they took some tests and yeah, you're uh, lactose intolerant or whatever it was then. All right, so you should not uh, eat or drink this and uh, here are some pills. And I remember how he described it because (laughs) it's like your intestines... They, they should have these nubbins that uh, take up uh, nutrients and so on. But uh, if you keep drinking milk and uh, eating whatever uh, and uh, you have this condition, then these shrink in. So the inside of your intestines basically uh, is as smooth as uh, a bicycle hose. <laughs> and you don't take up any nutrients. So... Of course, I've been thin my entire life, but that was because I was eating and drinking wrong. But when I started eating and drinking properly, I gained like uh, 15 kilos like overnight. So what you see now is how I was supposed to be all (laughs) all along. And and, And he said that, well, I've been used to that for my entire life and it worked. So maybe maybe I should just go back. I mean, it wasn't that bad. I mean... (laughs) But of course, there were some other side effects that the doctor said that it's best not to, but uh, yeah. It'd be all right just to save it for a couple of weeks, <clears throat> wait whilst every once in a while, wouldn't it, though? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I wonder the feeling if you've been having like diarrhea for the, your entire life, the first time you take a solid shit, how would that feel? <laughs> 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 I'm giving birth to a couch feeling. Yeah. <laughs> We're definitely like, in half pint territory now. What? Are people doing this every day? <laughs> <Rich our lives? laughs> 
Push, scream push, the first time. Yeah, <laughs> pushing an entire Morris Minor out your arse. <laughs> Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, the imagery. Oh. <laughs> so. It's not really anywhere to go from there, is there? <laughs> Only up, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Still, I want a coffee. So, yeah. Um, tools. This has been a good week. Um... And of course, I started by buying some of the smaller, cheaper stuff uh, for welding equipment so that I now need to buy a welder. Uh, And I did this week and it got delivered yesterday. So now I have a welder. Oh. Have you plugged it in yet? No, I haven't even plugged in the plasma cutter because (laughs) (laughs) this this is the fun part. Um... Of course, I need a, a bottle of gas, and I need uh, the filament, and uh, so I have to go and get that, of course. And then I started reading and watching YouTube videos, and um, I think maybe I have this tiny, very silent air compressor, uh, and it might not be large enough to sustain a cutting with the plasma cutter, so... Uh, you might get the 20 centimeters in and you have to wait for it to recharge before you can cut any longer. But I'm not going to cut any thick, long plates. I, I'm going to try it to see if it's enough. But uh, yeah, that's my plan for Saturday. I think I'll uh, go and get a gas canister tomorrow or the day after and then I'll try hook it up and see if it makes any sparks. Nice. So nice. nice. But yeah. Um, How much um, air does a plasma cutter need? not very much but it said it needed 80 to 100 psi or something like that and uh, it needed airflow so and so but i think the the compressor that i have have a relatively small tank as well so it uh, yeah it's a longevity goes out of, of it puff. yeah hmm. oh, of course ah, so new air compressor next then <laughs> yep and of course, now the, you need a, a welding jacket or something. I mean, it's all the small things that also costs a bit. Of course, I, I can weld in anything. I mean, I have my welding thongs, so uh, that should be sufficient enough. <laughs> yeah, a welding jacket is overrated, I think. I mean, I just have a old leather jacket. and so As long as you're, you're covering your skin with something, it's fine, I think. Yeah. Something that's not that flammable, perhaps. Don't wear a paper suit. <laughs> that might be stupid, yeah. Or just welding topless. That's not really a good thing either, I think. You get that uh, well, well, welder's that hand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a good sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, You've uh... got wel- welding sleeves, actually, KJ, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I got that yeah. last year. I remember you modeling them. Yeah. <laughs> On Instagram. Nice. Last year's <laughs> treasure trade, I got them. Yeah. That's good to have in the summer when it's uh, too hot to, to wear a jacket. And I mean, I'll, I've used a long sleeve t shirt before, but I mean, it's. You burn through those re- really fast if you make a mistake. So it's better to have <laughs> something that's not that flammable, as I said. So. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the plan. And then I, I also learned that the Beel Tema actually have square steel tubing at an affordable price. Hmm. Yeah. So that is uh, decent for table legs and whatever. So I'm, I'm going to buy a couple of meters of that for next to nothing just to have fun with this weekend. Um, and then, of course, I wanted to get this uh, bluing agent that they use to blacken steel. Hmm. And yep. I don't know if that has a very different word in Norwegian. I haven't really found the good translation for it, but I can't find a shop in Norway selling that stuff. So, I mean, I I need to order it from the UK or the States, but of course there are shipping restrictions and whatnot, so they have to send it by a boat or a horse and carriage or something, so it's going to take forever to get here. So, uh, I think I just got mine off of Amazon. Yeah. 
That got me thinking. I, I need to get it from gun shops. Yeah. We don't have many of those, I think. But yeah, I, I could try that Swedish Amazon site. I, I you, you talked about that earlier, KJ. I, I didn't get around yeah. to check that. So, uh, yeah. Oh, you don't have Amazon, do you, in Norway? No. No. Forgot that. I think there's. Do you some... have gun shops, Havard? Yeah, plenty of them. Um, yeah, you should be able to get it from there because that's what it was traditionally used for, wasn't it? Blowing the barrels. Yeah, I should. Uh, it's a it's a good tip actually. So I should just uh, yeah. pop in one on Saturday if they're open and ask if they have anything, or at least where they get their supply. Yeah. I mean, the Rasmus Lewin also maybe knows. I mean, he's a blacksmith. He probably has some contacts that might answer that question if he doesn't. So, yeah, and you know, you can go to his place and 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 hot blue it instead. I mean, just heat it yeah. up and and slap on some linseed oil. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot cooler. It takes a a while, perhaps for legs, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that was the technique. Not heard yeah. of that before. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the. It's a similar thing uh, to give it a. Uh, to blacken it, and yeah, I mean, you can you could use uh, graphite paste as well, if you feel like, but it's not really the same thing. Uh, then you put on a, on a graphite. Uh, uh, what's it called? Yeah, and other. Outer shell. Ah, I can't talk. Uh, <laughs> you give it a, a surface of uh, graphite that's uh, m often used on uh, wooden stoves and all weights oh, and that yeah, sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, and that's it's ra rather decent to work with as well. Yeah, because I, I saw that. Of course, uh, Norway have a major wood stove manufacturer that's uh, been like the traditional Norwegian stoves for like ever, and they sell this blacking agents for stoves who just yeah wipe on so that that is an alternative but uh but stoves are normally cast aren't they they normally have a little bit of texture to them yeah so maybe it won't it might, might not work on the smoothest stuff i'm not sure uh maybe I think not it will work yeah. but i think it might be hard to get a good even finish yeah uh, i think that perhaps. paste also rubs off kind of it's, it's not like a, a protective layer in that sense I mean, it, has, it doesn't rub off that easily once it's cured, I would say. I used it on, on the weights I have in my workshop, and those yeah. are pretty... You don't get black fingers, or they don't leave marks on, on stuff, so I think yeah, it's right. fine. But Maybe I mean, that's surely, an alternative, yeah. Cold bluing is probably the best way to go when it comes yeah. to legs like that. If you just don't paint them, but that's kind of boring. It's... I think it looks better if you keep some of the the metal look. Just dark. Yeah, I, I like that industrial just, style, and I hate painting. Actually, because... I think you're missing a trick. You could, um, you could. The next excuse to buy even more tools, you could get some polishing equipment and just get a high, a high polish on them instead. Make them shiny. <laughs> I don't like shiny things. <laughs> 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 then you get finger marks, and uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, I'm, I would be. Uh, I even like your rust color, so I, I'm happy yeah. of just leaving things outside and rubbing some uh, citrus oil on them or something to make them go rusty overnight. So, uh, yeah. but then you need to treat it with something so you don't uh, stain whatever touches it. <laughs> There's a few modern buildings over here which have um, been clad in steel, which is rusted, and they do look really, really smart. Yeah. I do like that look. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd want my table legs looking like that, though. No. <laughs> I'd need to match the, uh, the rest. I mean, it's a, it's a very dominant color, so you need something to really contrast it. But, yeah. It really annoys me that we don't have white oak here. We only get that crappy red. So it's... I mean, <laughs> red oak and then uh, rusty metal legs. That's a lot uh, of red. So, uh, no. And your beard as well. And yeah. It's just too much, isn't it? 
Too much red. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm colorblind. Yeah. That doesn't bother me. I, I mean, I, I probably doesn't don't see oak as red as other people do because I'm not bothered with with the ones who got here. So, yay for being colorblind. Yeah. You saved yourself a lot of money in materials. Good on you. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is that everyone else sees it in their own way, and not less I see it. Yeah. You can always. I thought, so I, I, just I, ruby over your red oak. Yeah, you Good could. White, white ruby. I'll ask, uh, I'll ask Mrs. Ambassador about it's it for you later. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still waiting for that ruby or goodie bag, but of course, uh, she, of course, uh, she's uh, saving it for when I arrive. So, uh... Uh, maybe. <laughs> oh no! Trying to reconnect. Make sure you I'm have a stable. I'm getting that message as well. Yeah. yeah, I got one before, so it's probably fine. Yeah, it's oh, I'm telling scary. myself it's probably fine. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, that was a pain in the ass last episode because uh, of that uh, trickery that Glenn did. Of course, I couldn't oh. line them up in the start. So then I thought, all right, I'll line them up at the end. And no, still the audio wasn't synced and it was drifting through the entire yeah. thing. So I, I had to cut up all our audio clips four or five times during the entire edit to just shift them a bit so that we were laughing at the same things. I noticed the timings were drifting off a little bit. It's still it's a little bit obvious in the recording as well, in the finished edit. Yeah. But it's, I've got that message up again, three and one in audience. I have that same one as well. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell's all that about? It's that FBI agent. I mean, yeah. KKJ <laughs> was doing too much uh, <laughs> smashing. And... It's you talking about smuggling bluing agent into Norway. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps. I have been thinking, what do I have to do to make the authorities come knocking on my door? I mean, I have... I have made a lot of things that go boom. Um, <laughs> and I know that in the States, several YouTubers have had FBI just knocking on their doors to just have a little bit of a reality check with them. And uh, of course... Uh, you want to be able to say that the police came out. Came that, that would be kind yeah. of cool. Yeah. Good yeah. Content, isn't it? Yeah, that's good content. <laughs> and of course... Uh, <laughs> My my cousin is a police officer. We're calling him. Can you can you just uh, pop on by? So it's not the same. <laughs> I mean, it, uh... <laughs> no, you want it to be real. You don't yeah. want to force it. But then force it has it. to it has to be something that you're allowed to do. Um, but I think maybe you get shut down by YouTube before the authorities here in Norway come sniffing about. Um, yeah. Or, to probably. be honest, I'm not a big enough YouTube channel. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> one day. Yeah, one day. <laughs> yeah, right. The way that the, the numbers are looking at the moment. <laughs> I mean, I, f I feel like I, I've got stuck in one of those, uh, a local minimum or maximum or something like that because I've been on yeah. and off, gaining one, losing one, gaining one, losing one. <laughs> Can't really get out of that hole. So, I, I mean, it, it would feel better if the numbers didn't change at all. But... I had... It's been the same for months. And then last week, it had like, all right, five, six, seven subscribers like overnight. And it's like, all right, I'm on the right side of 3009. And then 3009... <sighs> four or five and then it's like all right now i have a buffer so i can lose someone and then now i'm back at the three eight <laughs> 98 again so it's a yeah that's a local maximum and it's hard getting out of that pit <laughs> yeah so. i um i still i still pay attention to your two's figures but i've not brought it up lately because i can see what's been going on <laughs> 
Tinder is not newsworthy there anymore, so there's no point in talking about it. Be honest, you're the one who's subscribing, unsubscribing, subscribing, unsubscribing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you sit there with your in shells mobile that do subscribe, unsubscribe, subscribe, unsubscribe. <laughs> Hovar seemed a bit peppy today. Let's uh, let's <laughs> put let's a point let's, uh, let's adjust him down a notch or two, like and subscribe. <laughs> well, at, least I, at least I know to put it back on there when you're feeling sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Just long enough to give you false hope. <laughs> <laughs> One day, I'll do something stupid that uh, will uh, pique the interest of someone. <laughs> how will you feel, and I don't think it's going to be an issue, but how will you feel if the new Hellcorder video doesn't do well? Oh, it, it's not. I mean, every, I mean, to, Hel- to... every Hellcorder video since has been... <laughs> Like two, three hundred views at the most, so I don't expect the second one to take off as it did. I mean, yeah. it's uh, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, that's well, all right then. Yeah, you'll be you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I need to find something else at peak. So I mean, uh, I'm keeping a. Keeping my wages on the on the bagpipe guitar, that should uh, yeah. <laughs> should it the should uh, is, do good in the northern parts of your country. <laughs> you just don't know what what um, will work, do you? No, I mean, you no. Know, you, you had a pocket hole jig, I had a strumstick, you had a hell cord. I mean, <laughs> but that's the yeah. thing. I'm just doing my thing, and then yeah, of course I could. I, I see I see now that uh like uh, what's his name? Matthias Kranz who made the um, like a revolving bass guitar. And of course he's a relatively huge YouTuber and he now yeah sent that bass to some very big bass players on YouTube. I've seen it, yeah. I've been watching a lot of bass videos just lately. And it's like <laughs> Should I send him? Because he he said he would send it to anyone who had something to offer to the playability of it. And I mean, you should do that through a hell quarter. So it's like, should I like desperately try to seek out the to piggyback <laughs> on some of the larger YouTubers that make weird musical instruments? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or maybe you should have a friend do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Glenn said, oh, have you seen this crazy Norwegian guy? Didn't we have a like a social media manager? Or did I... oh, no. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if, if you want managing, just say. Just say. <laughs> I'll message anyone for you. <laughs> for, first, we need to get it to a working condition, and then we can start shamelessly uh, prostituting yeah. it out to, <laughs> to boost any numbers. Yeah. yeah. I think the biggest thing is we're definitely going to have to be local to your area now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Where's your winter uh, winter garden, man? Oh, yeah, he's, he's actually back in Sweden. So that is actually uh, yeah. a few hours in the car. So that's... Uh... Yeah, I think that is the obvious choice for you. But then again, it's like... He's years from completing his machine. So, I mean, yeah. I'm guessing we're in the well, same boat. <laughs> <laughs> it needs a video in between time then, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's like people like that. I mean, he's a professional musician, but also uh, some of them are also tilting towards being a musical genius uh, playing like any yeah. instrument and they are thinking yeah. in musical notes so it's like I, I I could bring two sticks and a empty bucket and just bang on that because that's how good I would be in comparison to anything <laughs> he, he would play so like uh, you play me play sticks <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I do. 
I had a crazy thought the other day that maybe I could learn to play this skill box guitar. And then I went to see Steve again the other day. And, uh, you know, he, he had a go on it. And it's, uh, no, I'm nowhere near that. Nowhere near. He says, you could just try this. This is really simple. And he's plucking one string at the bottom, one at the top. And then his left hand's doing something completely independent of that. And it's like, it's the equivalent of patting your head and rubbing your tummy. Yeah. For yeah. me, that. <laughs> that's I the... mean, that's the difference of. There's a difference of playing and playing, and yeah. for some people that that, I mean, if you if you practice all your life, then maybe you can get as good as he gets from doing it for a month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that was really fun. I saw this guy who, I think he his father said something that triggered him to like, all right, I'll learn how to play the piano, and of course he moved away. Uh, uh, to attend university or something like that. And he just like, he took courses and he practiced like hell, didn't tell yeah. anyone for years. And then he just went back home on holiday or whatever and just casually at a gathering of some sort, just sat down by the piano and just like played like <laughs> a god and like his father, like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> And it's the same. I saw this video about, um, I think there was a guy marrying a, a Korean lady. And he's actually been for years secretly learning how to speak Korean. So he has actually got yeah. a coach and everything. And then he spoke at their wedding for the first time. He addressed her parents first in English. Oh, and then wow. he just switched over to Korean and everybody like... What? <laughs> and of course, probably half of them like, oh shit, how long has he known what we've been yeah. saying? <laughs> I would get so mad. <laughs> I think I would have kept that one secret for the rest of the day. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm going to secretly learn Norwegian or Swedish and uh, surprise you one day. <laughs> oh, that would be so nice. <laughs> then we can pivot the, the podcast to to our languages instead. Yes. I was thinking sometimes you, uh, when we're chatting, and one of you, you're trying to find the right English word. And at that point, if you can't, you should probably just say it in your own language and then at least some of the audience will know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I mean, it's only fair. We did do the first year in English, the second year in Swedish, the third year in Norwegian, <laughs> and then the fourth year in English again, and then we just keep it spinning. So okay. that'd be nice. I could have two years off, <laughs> <laughs> oh, just sitting there and listening in. Yeah, yeah. I'll just laugh every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> the funny sounding words. <laughs> oh. Stop! You just said hallway. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I know this one. I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't listen un unless you uh, respond in the correct language. So, yeah, <laughs> that's something for the future, I guess. Do you speak any other languages? Nope. Both of you? No. Well, no. I well, I is... <laughs> it's a. Uh... I have a friend that she's working in, uh, I think we talked about this, uh, she, uh, yeah, to get higher up on the list uh, in her job, she just listed all the languages she knew, and of course, uh, she listed Norwegian, Swedish, and Danish, <laughs> and I mean, m most <laughs> of us would just not list all three of them, but yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's Norwegian, Swedish, Danish, that goes without saying, English, and some German, but yeah, that's... Yeah. I couldn't talk my way out of a bush with that, but yeah, could order a, a beer and say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's really all that matters. I really wanted to learn Spanish. I can see me using that, but yeah. that was never an option in any school I went to. And, and now I don't got time for that. <laughs> I got barely time for anything else. <laughs> Yeah, I was doing French on the Duolingo for quite some time, and thought I was making great progress. And then it said, "Let's do a recap." <laughs> At which point, 
I realised I'd forgotten at least 80% of what I'd been through. So yeah. at that point, I just gave up. But like you, I can say, I can order a beer and I can also say sorry, which I think is quite important. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know the rest of the language, yes, yeah, I'm sorry. It's a, yeah. it's a nice yeah. one to have. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I could, I'm probably, I could, could order something to drink and eat in both French and German, but that's about it outside the Nordic countries. Yeah. I haven't a clue how to speak German. That's, I mean, it's, it's close enough and we have so many uh, words that we borrowed from them. So, right. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a, uh, is the thing that we've been uh, fanboying over different countries throughout history. So we borrowed some from the Dutch and some from the French and some from the Germans and some uh, from okay. English. And so it's a, it's a smorgasbord. One of a few words, Swedish words that got <laughs> out in English. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much for listening and have a good night. Good night. Bye. 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 <laughs> and we didn't say bye for the main episode, so we can do another bye <laughs> as well for that. Have a good night. The, the, that's bye. all, folks. <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>